Welcome to the final community open house for the One Riverfront Chattanooga Plan. My name is Andrew Overbeck, and I'm a planner and principal with MKSK. I'm joined today by my colleague, Darren Meyer. Together, we'll review the community input and strategic action plan that has resulted from nearly 18 months of work with the community. Before I begin, I want to go back and return to the purpose of this work. And these are the things that have guided us throughout this process as we've engaged with the Chattanooga community. First, what is the Riverfront District's role in making Chattanooga livable, sustainable, and competitive? How do we create a Riverfront District that is for all Chattanoogans? And how do we plan for inclusive growth and equitable development as we look at the next stage of development in the Riverfront District? We've had the pleasure with engaging with more than 2,000 Chattanoogans throughout this process. And I first and foremost wanna thank our steering committee that has worked with us throughout this work in addition to an outreach committee that we formed after our first public meeting in January of 2020. Uh, we've had the great fortune to engage with folks online through stakeholder interviews, through community workshops, both in-person and digital, and through the work of the River City Company, fantastic uh, sort of non-traditional engagement that took place in the era of COVID with the scavenger hunt and open street engagements. Um, put together with these, uh, with one-on-one -on -one and other outreach meetings, as I said, we've reached more than 2,000 people in this work that we've done together. The action plan that has resulted from that work really begins with the four aspirations that the community has come together around and reached consensus. Um, as we looked at the Riverfront District in our last community workshop in March, we reviewed these four aspirations and received affirmation from the community uh, that these were where we should invest our time and effort in moving forward. Those four are activate the riverfront, create a place for all Chattanoogans, develop a greater sense of place, and strengthen connectivity to the riverfront. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Darren to review the resulting eight strategies that will help bring one riverfront Chattanooga to life. To help achieve these aspirations, um, we've developed um, eight actionable strategies uh, that we'll walk through, um, again, to help create a more welcoming, comfortable, and active riverfront. For each of these strategies, we'll identify some of the direct comments and anecdotes that we heard that we think capture the spirit um, of each of these throughout our community engagement process. The first strategy is humanize the parks. And you can see on this page, um, we heard from Chattanooga residents that they'd like to see more shade and things to do in the green spaces, and that this should be a priority moving forward. The work that was done for the 21st century waterfront um, helped create uh, a vibrant destination uh, for Chattanooga. And as we look at the decades that have passed, um, we wanna be able to build on that investment and make sure that the riverfront and particularly the public green spaces evolve to best meet the needs of the community. These riverfront assets are free for the entire community. Um, they help support local businesses, they help drive investment, and ultimately are an important part of the social fabric um, of Chattanooga and help collectively build community. The riverfront today um, sees a great amount of activity um, over the course of the events that are scheduled there, but on a day-to-day -day basis, as you can see in these images, um, there's a lack of activity. And that's an important aspect that we want to be able to improve um, as part of thinking ahead to the next uh, generation of these public open spaces and the riverfront. There's um, generous use of asphalt and turf grass throughout these areas, which help support and create the flexible spaces needed for events, but lack some of the basic amenities that are needed um, for day-to-day -day human comfort. You can see some examples of those on this page, um, which include um, a variety of options for seating, the importance of shade, especially in the warm summer months, and also bringing in color and art and creativity and flowers um, and nature into the experience of the riverfront as well. This image shows um, the possibilities that are um, uh, available to us on the riverfront. Um, in this view, we are looking towards um, Route 27 and the bridge over the Tennessee River with the public pier to our back. And you can see this is one great opportunity to um, provide some more green on the river's edge um, to help improve the perception of safety, um, also to improve the, the habitat um, and the health of the river. Um, you can see here also the opportunity for some um, environmental art 
and some natural play elements that really appeal to all generations uh, have the ability to withstand periodic flooding. This is a view looking in the opposite direction um, at the existing amphitheater. Um, and one of the examples of a light touch that can be taken um, that can have a dramatic impact in terms of increasing comfort and use. So here you can see the use of umbrellas, um, seating, planters, all of which are removable um, for major events, could be reused in other locations, but on day-to-day -day basis um, create a, a great respite um, from the sunlight and warmth during the warm months um, and help increase the activity along the riverfront. The second strategy, come together at the river, has to do with the events and activities on a daily and weekly basis. And again, you can see from our Chattanooga residents that they'd love to see more programming like artist markets, arts and cultural activities, pop-up shops. Um, others have noted that they would definitely come to the Riverfront District if there were more culturally appropriate events that interested them. So we're excited to look at some opportunities um, for achieving that. Um, and under this strategy, we have three elements to this. The first is the idea of really setting the trajectory and momentum. Um, for this type of activity and events in the district um, with a launch event uh, that's a capstone for this planning process, this community-based planning process, um, and really the kickoff of, of thinking of the future of the Riverfront District. The second is building on that to look at the week-to-week -week and day-to-day -day programming and the public open spaces along the Riverfront. And the third has to do with looking at the major events. In terms of uh, the launch event, we have the opportunity to create some elements um, which can be um, quasi-permanent. Um, they can have a life of several months, up to several years, to help create activity and uh, shade and comfort and seating for these events, um, and then can be repurposed um, and have uses in other parts of the community and other public parks. One of the keys to this event is really engaging um, the local cooks and chefs and makers and artists um, and having the entire breadth of the community bring their creativity and expertise um, to enliven both the setting uh, for this launch event um, and the activities that take place. We're also working closely with the River City Company, the city and other partners um, to increase the uh, daily and weekly programming on the riverfront and make sure that that programming responds to the desires and needs of the community. As Andrew mentioned, um, these partners looked at several ideas during the past year um, when we had COVID to help um, drive activity towards the local businesses and the riverfront. Um, and as we look ahead, you can see on the right-hand side of this image, some of the great ideas and programming that is being put in place for 2021. Um, including the opportunity to get children, families, and all ages and generations um, to the riverfront for these activities. And then lastly, a key part um, of coming together at the river has to do with the major annual events, which are important to the community. And what we want to make sure that we understand is how we work closely with these event organizers so that they can be staged and executed in a way that still drives that great energy in downtown Chattanooga and the Chattanooga community, but does so in a way that allows for the use of these spaces on a day-to-day -day basis, um, also by local residents and businesses. Um, so we've been working closely with these major event organizers over the course of the past 18 months um, to understand how those events are organized and laid out and staged and to accommodate that um, in our proposed design. The third strategy is to build inclusively. The foundation for all of the work that we do in the Riverfront District needs to have um, at its core the idea of looking at how both public spaces and the public realm, as well as private development and private investment, um, is geared towards creating a more equitable and inclusive Chattanooga community. And you can see the quote here from the Chattanooga resident um, that really the Riverfront District should be a place for the entire city with businesses and opportunities that are a true picture of the city's diversity. And I think that captures the spirit of this idea well. And one of the key strategies as part of this approach is to look at the areas that you see highlighted in this view, which are under ownership, um, either by local government or nonprofits, in particular the city of Chattanooga and River City Company, um, and the ability of that property ownership along with some tools um, to help increase opportunities for affordable housing, um, for workforce housing, and also opportunities for local and minority-owned businesses um, to locate and thrive in the district. 
that ownership really gives us a strong advantage in terms of being able to make um, the, that financially feasible um, and have the ability to really achieve our goals that we heard through our community engagement process um, for an inclusive and equitable riverfront district. The fourth strategy is establishing the riverfront front door. Um, again, you can see at the bottom of this page some of what we heard through our community engagement process. I wish there were more places like restaurants, bars, or coffee shops where you could sit and enjoy the water. The riverfront front door is what we have termed the interface between the riverfront parks and the adjacent district and built environment. And as a way of comparison, you can see in this slide a view looking down at Riverfront Parkway from 27 to Market Street. And in the lower half of the image, you can see the same amount of street frontage on Main Street on South Main. And the big difference between these two views is that on South Main Street, you have a much finer grain of building fabric. You have more density of public facing um, commercial operations, retail operations. So it makes for a much more exciting and vibrant and active and interesting um, experience along the street and provides some of those great opportunities for local business um, to better serve the users of the riverfront, the parks, and the surrounding district. The idea is looking at some key parcels that are along Riverfront Parkway um, that in conjunction with the improvements to the public open space can really help generate that um, activity and that, that footfall and the presence of pedestrians, which will help create that synergy between the riverfront, the parks, and the adjacent district. And the three that we have focused on here um, are the parking lots between the ball stadium and the river, um, the corner of um, Chestnut Street and Riverfront Parkway that faces the Chattanooga Green, and the top of Ross Landing. For the parking lots that are in front of the baseball stadium, this is a great opportunity for equitable development. The goal for these pieces, which are owned um, by the River City Company and the city of Chattanooga, is for mixed income residential, both affordable workforce housing and market rate, um, as well as opportunities on the ground floor for minority owned and local owned businesses, which can benefit from the local programming, the activation along the riverfront, the improvements to the public open space, and one of the great locations within the community um, to have a business um, with that proximity to the river. So here we're looking for a very vibrant um, ground floor um, with retail and commercial opportunities, and the opportunity for mixed income residential above overlooking the river. The second location, which you can see here, is looking at the corner of Chestnut and Riverfront Parkway. Here you can see the aquarium that exists in the background. And this helps leverage some of the underused green space that's between the aquarium and the river. Um, in this idea, we're looking at how we can have some um, commercial or retail operations. They could potentially be food and beverage, um, where you could get a lemonade, get a sandwich, get a coffee, um, and enjoy all the activity happening around in the public green space and along the river. These structures could be designed in a way that very much complements um, the iconic architecture of the aquarium um, and meets the goals of having a green and sustainable approach um, to how we build and develop in the river. And the last um, of these key locations to help establish the riverfront front door and generate that activity um, along the river is at the top of Ross Landing, where you have the high point, wonderful vistas of the river and the bridges and the hills beyond. And again, an opportunity uh, that's very rare uh, to be this close to the water um, and have a chance for a cup of coffee um, or a glass of wine or even potentially stage um, community events um, at this location um, and really be in great proximity to the river and the adjacent park space as well as the surrounding attractions. The fifth strategy is the idea of creating a civic campus, and this focuses on the block um, where the Tennessee Aquarium is located. The goal of this strategy is to look at how we can create um, synergy around the Tennessee Aquarium um, with uses that appeal to all generations. The location um, of the Tennessee Aquarium and the block that it sits on is critical in terms of its interface with Broad Street and, and, and stronger connections to downtown. Um, connections from the Bluff Arts District and the North Shore coming across the Walnut Street Bridge. And you can see in this view, it's key proximity to some of the public green spaces and potential development sites along the riverfront as well. 
Looking down at this site that you see outlined in pink along the river, there are several key areas that we've identified, and we'll walk through um, a handful of those in the subsequent slides. But the first is the idea of strengthening the access, both visually um, and in terms of accessible paths um, from the aquarium plaza um, down to the river. So making sure that we can have um, ADA, ADA compliant paths that are comfortable and beautiful and shady, um, which allow you to um, move from high grade to low grade down towards the river to comfortably cross Riverfront Parkway. We've also looked at the uh, cafe on the green, which we showed in the previous slide overlooking the Chattanooga Green at the corner of Chestnut and Riverfront Parkway. Some spaces um, that can be um, uh, secured for events that are part of uh, either community events or aquarium sponsored events. And then looking at some of the public spaces that are there today and how they can be enhanced um, to provide better service to the community and better benefit to the community. The first of those is what we've called the head of broad market. So today you see great success with the farmer's market being staged in front of the aquarium. You have a tremendous amount of real estate available um, for an event like that. So in this view, you can see um, some proposed renovations to the aquarium plaza that really align with the need for some planned capital improvements uh, around the aquarium. Um, and you can see here that this could function both on a day-to-day -day basis with some shade and movable seating, which you see on the lower left for passive use, as well as on the right, the idea that we could have the um, infrastructure and the space layout for events like the farmer's market um, to be well-suited in this space. In the next view, um, you see the connection of Broad Street into the uh, plaza, the civic block, um, where it tees into the Tennessee Aquarium. We have called this the signature civic commons. And the notion is, and we'll talk a little bit about Broad Street in a moment, that Broad Street is a great opportunity to better connect downtown um, and the commercial corridor along Broad to the riverfront. And this is a key moment um, in that the length of Broad Street. So at Aquarium Way and Broad, we're looking at continuing that civic space um, and creating the opportunity for water play, which is protected from the street, um, the opportunity for shaded seating. Um, we have the opportunity for circulation that will serve the needs for drop-offs um, at this key location, and really a great place for um, whimsical and iconic uh, public art um, and high quality design that's really uh, a signature element um, between downtown and the riverfront. The next space shows uh, the water feature that exists today with some modest improvements um, to help uh, increase the safety and usability of that. So this is the opportunity for families with, with youth and young children to have a shady place um, to play on warm days adjacent to the aquarium and the attractions that are around the Tennessee Aquarium. And the images on the right show how that can be done in a way that really um, increases the usability of the water play features while minimizing the risk. I'm looking at very modest amounts of standing water um, and you can see some of the young kids in these images uh, being able to participate um, in these types of water features. Um, so knowing how popular and well used and well loved the existing water feature is, we wanna build on that momentum and look at how it can be potentially improved uh, for safety and, and better serve the needs of families and children. The sixth strategy um, focuses on Broad Street and the ability to connect to downtown. You can see again, some uh, really uh, great thoughts uh, from the community that Broad Street is an enormous opportunity for public space um, to add economic opportunity and rebalance street life. A great sentiment for one of the Chattanooga residents that we spoke to. So when we think about Broad Street, we're looking both at the public realm um, and the infill development opportunities and adaptive reuse opportunities um, along Broad Street itself. Um, you can also see here the importance of 4th Street as a gateway into the community and one of the perceptual barriers as people are walking north and south between the Riverfront District and downtown. So how can we improve uh, that crossing at 4th Street and that experience? Broad Street itself, um, as its name implies, um, is a very wide thoroughfare. Um, you have uh, approximately 120 feet from building face to building face that you see in the image in the lower left. And only a small portion of that is needed to accommodate the traffic that exists today. 
the traffic and vision in the future um, with the, the potential development that could take, take place along broad. The balance of that width, um, we have the ability to look at repurposing or reallocating some of that space along broad to create better facilities for pedestrians, for cyclists, for the businesses that are along Broad Street, um, and even some civic public space, creating the idea of a linear park along Broad Street. You can see that idea shown here in this image um, where Broad Street runs from lower left to upper right in this view and the intersection with fourth and how we have the ability to really signal to uh, motorists that this is a place for pedestrians first and the ability to accommodate cyclists, um, have public space, um, have dedicated protected uh, places for pedestrians and cyclists along these corridors, um, as well as some generous green space and opportunities for the businesses to spill out um, and have their presence um, on the sidewalks as well. This view shows the opportunity to condense all of the lanes into the center and expand the sidewalks, as we talked about, um, for outdoor dining, um, for the use of outdoor retailing, um, as well as the, the protected bike lanes. And this shows a view where that public space could be concentrated in the center in an enhanced median um, that's almost like a linear park or greenway, again, connecting downtown to the Tennessee Aquarium, still with the ability um, for protected um, use for cyclists as well as um, for flexible sidewalk space for retailers. And lastly, along Broad, there's several um, uh, opportunities for infill, um, for development as we look into the future where there may be interest from the market um, in, in future employment opportunities as we recover from COVID, new shops and restaurants um, to create that, that nucleus of energy and that critical mass of commercial and retail activity within the River Free, Riverfront District, um, hospitality options um, to better accommodate the events and the users um, that, that visit um, this key part of the, the community, um, and also the ability to increase residential density, more people waking up in the Riverfront District um, using those public open spaces, using the local shops and restaurants, and creating a great mixed-use urban neighborhood. The seventh strategy is refreshing the Riverwalk. Uh, the Tennessee Riverwalk is a tremendous asset um, for the Chattanooga community in the region, um, but as you approach the Riverfront District and the downtown stretch of the Riverwalk, it loses some clarity. We want to look at how we can better improve the physical facilities um, of the Tennessee Riverwalk along this stretch. Um, you have some areas that are fairly circuitous and difficult to navigate. Um, some areas that have become a little dog-eared in, in terms of the, the quality of the, the physical space that accommodates the trail. And in this case, we're looking at how we can um, improve Riverfront Parkway itself from Georgia Avenue down and under Market Street. Um, where you have the downhill grade, um, where right now traffic speed increases, how we can do some traffic calming, create a complete street that accommodates the Tennessee Riverwalk, which you see labeled in pink on the left-hand side of this view. And then once we create the physical space, um, creating a system of wayfinding and environmental graphics that is vibrant, exciting, clear, and legible um, so that all users understand how to navigate the Riverwalk um, and access uh, the attractions in the district. That are adjacent. The last of the eight strategies is get your feet wet. And this has to do with the river itself and the experience that, that being on the water um, allows the Chattanooga community. You can see some of this happening today in this image of kayakers out on the Tennessee River. And so the first opportunity that we want to explore is the idea of creating um, an access um, in the downtown stretch here, the Riverfront District um, along the Tennessee River, where you can put your kayak, your paddleboard, your canoe, your personal watercraft in um, with a, a, a protected landing. And you can see this could happen in conjunction with the area that we showed previously in the presentation between the public pier and 27, which you see in the background of this view, with a softer green edge, better access to the river. Um, and this could really co uh, complement um, the existing uh, boat docks and piers uh, which accommodate motorized craft today. In conjunction with the access to the river for paddleboard and kayaks, there's also the opportunity to create some storage um, or potentially rental um, for these as well under the public pier. So you can see in this view um, the ability to take some of that underused space which is um, under the pier today between the abutment um, and the river itself where you could again have storage for the personal watercraft um, or potentially rent those 
Um, in this space, obviously, we would be designed um, to be floodable um, in periodic flooding events. The next idea under get your feet wet um, is the notion of water taxis, um, which Chattanooga community has explored before. Um, and the time may be ripe um, to look at this option again, particularly with some new developments that are happening um, along the riverfront. So in addition to connecting to the North Shore, McClellan Island, um, and some of the existing uh, amenities that are there today, this could be a great opportunity um, to have a fun way um, to connect some of the new developments and other parts um, of the riverfront that are being developed um, to the west and to the east. McClellan Island is a tremendous asset um, and somewhat underused and under leveraged asset for the Chattanooga community. Um, we were excited to see the investment announced um, by the Audubon Society recently, and we love the notion of this natural beauty and natural asset um, that, that McClellan Island is today and in the future. Um, so looking at opportunities for making it accessible, um, so the accessible docks, um, building on the environmental quality um, and the health of the river and the island with opportunities for education, environmental education, wildlife observation, um, potentially um, environmental art. Um, and all of these um, would be a great complement to some of the ideas that are envisioned and some of the investment going forward on McClellan Island to preserve this natural asset um, within uh, the urban part of the Chattanooga Riverfront. Lastly, um, looking at the area that is in front of the Chattanooga Green and the amphitheater, we have further ability to highlight um, the environmental education, the mission of the Tennessee Aquarium, um, and create a healthier riverfront with floating wetlands, um, as well as some observation piers um, that can get people out to the water, get close to the water's edge, um, and be part of the experience um, that is uh, the Tennessee River offers. Um, these could be designed as floating with flexibility for the movement of the water up and down. They could be relocated as needed to stage major events. But you can see in these images, um, really tremendous opportunity um, to be down close to the water, um, to get your feet wet um, and experience the environment of the Tennessee River um, and, and learn about it at the same time. In summary, we've worked closely with the community over the past year and a half to understand both the concerns and the aspirations of local Chattanoogans for the future of their riverfront. We've developed eight strategies to create a more comfortable, welcoming, active, and inclusive experience for all Chattanooga. 